Our next out viewers is here at Curtis Hillman's Boat Shop in Milford Bay, north of Bracebridge and south of Port Carling. Let's see what Kirk's working on. We're looking here, viewers, at a rather elegant 1958 Seabird. There's quite a story with this boat. <clears throat> Built in 1958 for two brothers, I guess, whose grandfather died in uh, 1983. The boat was then sold from the estate to a collector from Peterborough. The brothers grew up with the boat being used as the main transportation to and from the family island. The brothers tracked it down and brought it back in 1992, and it was in use until 96 when the engine was failing and the boat leaked too much. She sat in a garage <clears throat> until 2013, and she was moved outside under tarps until 2018, which of course, I guess, is when Kurt got his hands on her. <clears throat> the name of the boat, Wenawa, was the name Native Americans Indian Indians gave their island, meaning place of sunshine. Looks like Curtis has put a new bottom on her. Wow, she's going to be a very elegant seabird when she's finished. Curtis has three smaller crafts in his big workshop here. Viewers, this one is a 1936 Duke Playmate, center drive. And he says he just started this project boat about three weeks ago. Uh, the engine's off getting some TLC and a new bottom. It's a Buchanan Midget. A new bottom is in order for this little guy. And a top coat of varnish to clean it up when we're all done. Hope to have it done by the end of May. Here we're looking at a Gravette Dispro from 1954. She's getting a new bow stem, new keel, and about six new bottom planks and some new ribs. He says he still needs to fully cut out for the device. A new rudder uh, to properly fit the boat uh, will be created as well. <clears throat> Interesting to know that they were building disc bros even as late as 1956. Boat on display here is a Duke rowboat. Not sure of the year of her. And Curtis says last fall we gave her a little TLC and uh, as well as three coats of varnish on the interiors and two on the deck and sides. Very nice. She's kept her original patina. But hopefully the new varnish might keep a few leaks out. Very grateful old woman. Here we are at Stan Hunter's Rebuilt Boat Shop viewers, also in the Milford Bay area. Very sleek rowboat here in Stan Shop, yours. Looks like she's got some new seats, new floorboards. And Stan is gradually going to be weaning himself from some of his stock of boats. For sale at the moment is a 24 foot Johnson and a 21 foot Duke, a 20 foot Duke, a 19 foot Playmate and a 17-foot W.J. Johnson. I wonder if that's the boat we're looking at here. Certainly classic. She's obviously going to have some new planking based on the holes Stan has punched in her. And it looks like one of the purpose of those holes is to help support uh, clamps to put new ribs in. Nonetheless, graceful lines on this boat. Viewers, we're looking here at a 1948 22-foot Gravette Streamliner. Beautiful, beautiful boat. Dukes has just put a new uh, bottom on her. And uh, some other work. She's on her seventh coat of varnish. She's going to go to Aurelia for rewiring, and uh, she'll come back, and they'll finish off the, the varnish with her. But obviously, new ribs, new bottom. Her original uh, engine was a six-cylinder, I think it was a hundred horse. She's now got a 300 horse, a 6.2 liter Merck engine in her. She'll fly. These are very valuable boats. So they're certainly worth restoring. Real collector's items. This boat was in the former Grayson Speed Museum in Gravenhurst for a while on display. 
and uh, presumably she's gone to a new owner. These curvaceous lines really set the streamliners apart. Looking here, viewers, at a 1951 19-foot Seabird. She's had all new varnish on her. Looking pretty spiffy. She's had a replacement engine in her. And uh, she'll be going to Lake Joseph, apparently, when she's completed. Dukes are also doing some very beautiful varnish work. Here we are at Tom Adams' shop, uh, viewers, with his very clever signature uh, placard here. Let's see what Tom's working on today. Here we're looking at a Gru Jolly Giant, viewers. Interesting, because the Port Carling web Boats website has uh, several Gru Jolly Giants uh, displayed for sale. 1951, as I mentioned, 23 footer, I believe, and powered by a fire, fireball eight cylinder engine. This boat's had a ton of work done on her new bottom, new ribs, new frames, stripped and sanded for varnishing. There you are, fireball V8 225 horse, I presume. Wow. Great Georgian Bay boat, or, or one of the Great Lakes boats, I presume. She'd be pretty comfortable on most uh, substantial waters. The Giant has had a new transom as well. Great boat. We're looking here, viewers, at a brand new design of a boat done by Steve Killing with some support from several others. It's a 20-footer, I believe. She's going to be powered by a 250 horsepower, 4.5 liter inboard-outboard. Top speed of about 50 miles an hour. She'll, she's a dry hull. She's west system. And uh, quite wide and beamy. Single planked hull, but uh, reinforced with epoxy and so on. She'll seat five. It'll be very interesting to see this boat in the water, especially on her sea trials. She'll fly. Here we are, viewers, outside James Osler's shop, just uh, west of Port Carling, Ontario, looking at a cute little seabird for sale here. Looks like she's been well cared for. Probably boathouse stored or else she's had a lot of interior work done. My guess is she's probably powered by a Buchanan Ford uh, midget engine. Pardon me, a midget engine. I'm not sure if they're four cylinders or not. Static wave. Interesting. Makes me wonder if my wife would consider another wooden boat. <laughs> Let's see what James has got on tap. We don't often see a boat like this, viewers. This is Wendigo, one of a Great Lakes, uh, pardon me, a Muskoka Lakes boat. She's in for some planking, new planking. Apparently she's still in regular operation, main, main the, uh, the owner's main use boat. So she's a real historic relic, <clears throat> an operational piece of history. Side steering here. Remarkable that she's lasted as long as she has. James Osler figures maybe late 18 or late 1800s, 1890s. Isn't that something? Oh, she. This boat's a, a nautical treasure. See where some of the planking is going to be replaced down here for sure. 
It'll be a treat to see her back in action on the water as well. We're in James Varnishing room of yours here looking at a 34 foot minette. One of these rare creme de la creme boats. Another collector's item. Beautiful varnish job on her. <laughs> 